What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Electric Productions. I am so glad to be bringing you Battleship Brigade today. Battleship Brigade is a weird amalgamation of a few different game styles and just like a great roll of sushi, all of these things come together to make an awesome game. Now this game was put out by Trinket Studios and Trinket Studios uh, went and utilized Adult Swim to actually uh, publish and produce the game and Adult Swim has had some hit or miss titles but I think that they really knocked it out of the park with this one and let's jump in and take a look and see what we've got. So there's not too many options to tweak here but there is one key one that I'm thrilled to see and that is your controller layout can be tweaked to your liking. So that's a big one for me. Challenges does allow you to either do Restaurant Rush, which is just doing the cooking portion of the game for fun, or Break the Dishes, which is just the combat and platforming portion of the game. There's also Daily Cook-Off, which is going to help to add some longevity to this title. But for now, let's jump into play. And I have played a good bit just to get an idea of the game, the story, and everything else. For time's sake, I'm going to kind of skip through some of the story elements and just paraphrase it for you. So the game does start off saying that there was monsters roaming the earth, they were a big problem until these battle chefs came along. Not only did they fight monsters, but they turned them into delicious dishes too. And this is the main character's parents, uh, the father and mother, and her name is Mina. She's a bit of a lazy bones, but you know what, that's okay because she's got a heart of gold. So let's go ahead here, and this is the key to the cooking mini game that is what you're going to be utilizing quite a bit. And it uses like a bejeweled style system where um, you're moving around the jewels trying to get three in a row and upgrading the jewels to more powerful gem combinations, which actually raises the level of the dish that you're preparing. All right, so let's go ahead and throw in another delicious ingredient here. We're going to cook it and then we can stir it like like so. Lining up our gems, creating more powerful ones. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate our green over there and then bring it down. And that's really going to enhance the dish. We're going to pick it up. We're going to serve it. And that looks delicious. Now she wants to join the battle brigade, excuse me, battle brigade chefs. Her parents don't want her to leave. Understandably, they're concerned about her, and uh, they think that it's just too dangerous and too risky and whatnot. So they, the mom goes ahead and tells her that there is a customer out there who wants a dish, and he's kind of a harder-to-please customer. So she says, go out, gather some ingredients, and then bring it on in and cook it up. Now, you have to be careful, as these delicious foods will fight back. But Mina's a pretty capable fighter, in all honesty, even at the beginning of the game. There's not too much to worry about. I would say that, at least for the start of this game, you're looking at definitely more of a story-driven and cooking-driven experience rather than a combat-driven one. Alright, so let's take these dishes and, or I'm sorry, take these ingredients and drop them on in. Let's see what else do we have here. I'm going to drop these in. And let's put in some diversity. There we go. Now we're going to take and, well, you know what? We can fit this in too. And now let's cook up what we've created. So immediately anything that's already a match will go ahead and automatically combine into better ingredients. We can move this over and move this down. There we go. And we get one of our super ingredients, so to speak. And let's rotate this up and make that into a better ingredient as well. Now, what we can do is we can then run back outside and chop up some more delicious ingredients to put into our dish. Combat's very quick and handles very well. Mina is not, um, she doesn't hit the strongest, but uh, all of her attacks are pretty rapid fire. So let's go to the pantry and let's throw in some more ingredients. Let's throw in some more of the blue here, some of this nectar. 
We've got some good green stuff going down there, so let's throw these in. There we go. Now our dish is already over 50, so at this point uh, we're, we're already in good shape. But let's see if we can't sweeten the pot a little bit. Nope, it's not going to go in. So what we want to do at this point is we want to stir it up. And let's do just that. I'm going to quickly go back here. I'm going to go back to the pantry. I'm going to throw in just a couple more ingredients. And at this point, I'm really just kind of having fun with it. Let's rotate that. Oops. Let's rotate that around here. And let's put in the last of our ingredients really quick. Throw that in for a little spice. My stomach can't handle another five flavored cheap cheetah bottle. That was one time. Um, let's do it like let's do it like this. There we go. And the dish is actually up to 120 points. So we had a little fun there. And then you serve the dish. Hey Mina, got a new experience. And then this gentleman tries it out, fakes that it tastes terrible, and then just jokingly says, nah, it's actually pretty good. So at this point, your mom tells you to please go pick up some ingredients. This gentleman, Simon, is your friend. And what basically ends up happening is, as Mina says, I'm leaving, I'm going to go to this tournament to compete. And Simon says, we're going to get the money, and the money that her mom gave her to get ingredients, she's actually going to take that money and ask Simon to simply spot the family the ingredients he agrees to cover up for her and so off she goes she tells her sister here who gives her a couple quick tips and tricks and one of the ones she teaches us is how to do magic and for magic you've got these daggers that you can fire which are pretty cool and even cooler is this whirlwind ability that you can utilize and then they just want you to fill your satchel up with ingredients. Which we can do fairly quickly. We can utilize our newly learned ability. And the new ability that we learned is actually very useful for stationary enemies. As they can't really escape. I find the daggers to be useful for flying creatures. And that's it, we filled our satchel. So now it's time for final goodbye. She asks if we have underwear. We say yes, and she awards us this small token. So plus one mana, plus one health, and I'm gonna switch out the health, as health is not too much of a concern here early in the game. At that point, you're done with your home area, at least for the time being, and you move on to the first big town, big city, and that's Brigade Town. You get in line, you get pooped on by a bird. This gentleman tells you that's actually good luck. He seems to be a nice enough fellow. He lets you cut. Mina wants to cut even more and turns herself into an old woman and cuts to the front of the line. She pays a good portion of the money that she has and is told to show up at 6 a.m. the next day. You can interact with a few different things here. There's a cat and a store that's filled with cat stuff. And upon getting inside of this hotel, we're told that the remainder of our gold will get us room, board, and food for the duration of the first cooking tournament we're going to take place in. She takes a nap, wakes up late, because again, she's a bit of a lazy bones. There's stationery and a place to write to your family. You go downstairs, you can interact with a few of the different objects in the room here. This gentleman is, has, uh, he is hard of sight and hearing and mistakes you for an orkin lady. You run into Corinne here, realize you've missed orientation, and Corinne agrees to help you out by running you through the initial test. And all you have to do is go find somebody to um, spar with in your first cooking competition. These people are all too busy, except for the nice gentleman you met the day before, whom you can challenge. And he agrees to go ahead, and she is going to, Corinne is going to referee the match. 
As you can see, the game is pretty heavy in its story elements. It is definitely an RPG at heart, even with the tile-based, uh, you know, Bejeweled-style cooking and with the combat. It's an RPG first. All right. So she tells you the ingredients that you need. So the main thing she wants... Karana is the main thing she wants. So we see there that the little um, pitcher plant style creatures are going to give us that. I never thought I'd get to see All right. So what we need to do then, and this is key to a lot of your cooking, you want to go and you want to gather up as much of the ingredient. Oh, I was a little off there. You want to gather up as much of the ingredient that you uh, as you can the one that's desired for the match. So what we're going to do here, if you go too far, you actually start to find some tougher enemies. For this dish, what I want to do is actually add a little spice to it. Now our satchel's already full. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish off these two little plants here really quickly and get back to my cooking location. And let's go ahead and throw some of that stuff into the pot. All right, at this point, what we're going to do is, is we want to just cook it up like we've seen before. So automatically, it's going to combine some of the ingredients for us, which is really nice. Look how quickly we got some uh, additional points put in there. And I'm going to go ahead and leave, go to my pantry, and I'm going to toss in this. And I'm now going to... I'm going to go grab some more ingredients. Now, there's a timer in the upper right-hand corner there. And that timer, when it runs out, you better have your dish on the uh, serving location. Can't think of what it's called right now. The table, I guess. Come, come here. Uh-oh. I gotta get up top there in order to get that pitcher. Let's pick that up. We've got a couple more spaces left. Definitely want the pitcher there. Not too interested in the jelly. Because the main thing she wanted in this dish was the green. But I do want one more fire. I'm gonna pick that up. There we go. And we're headed back now. We've got two minutes and 16 seconds left. So we're still doing good time-wise. Now, let's go ahead and throw in this, and then stir up things a little bit. Yes. We're going to rotate this one down. There we go. Let's add in some more ingredients. Let's stir it up a little bit here. Whoops. Um, there we go. Now we've added a little spice to the dish. Gives us another one of the bigger green gems. At this point, we're going to... Well, let's see. I'll do it this way. We've got one minute left. Let's quickly rotate this one down. And we're at 90. We've got 53 seconds left. Let's see if we can throw anything else in here really quick. Let's 
We're going to have to do this quick now. It's going to give us another green. There we go. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to serve it. 116 points on that dish. So that's that's pretty strong. All right. Now it's randomized each time. The last time he served a different dish when I played the first time. So we did a Sun Hat, sun hat Tomato Gazpacho. Wow. That's 150 points that he brought to the table. So he did really well. Now I had more earth element in this dish, which is what they were asking for, so I got a bonus. So I still managed to pull ahead and I managed to win the match. It's a lot of fun. It's it's a very different game than anything I've ever played before, and I have to admit, at first I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but Mia is one of the most likable protagonists I've come across in an RPG-style game in a long time, and I've been really impressed thus far uh, with the way that they present the story, the characters, the art style, the cooking is a fun mechanic, the combat is a little on the mindless side right now, but still fun nonetheless. All of the cutscenes in between are awesome. So you can see chapter one's complete, and we move on to chapter two. And you know what, guys? I'm pretty much going to stop it there because at this point, you've gotten a pretty decent taste at what this game has to offer. So if you're interested in a game that has lots of different... You meet a new character here that uh, is supposed to be your overseer for uh, the, the time that you're in the contest. So if this looks like something that you're interested in, if you want a game that has sort of a little bit of a town hub world, uh, RPG elements, great graphics, likable characters, the fun bejeweled style cooking game, light combat, uh, loot and gear that you can pick up, if all of these things sound like fun to you, then I dare say that you would like this title. At $20, it's a little on the steep side for a smaller title, but I think that this one's got enough to make it worth the asking price. Let me know in the comments section below, though, what you think, and what are some of the things that you like or maybe dislike about what you've seen here today. As always, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank you so much. Hopefully, I was able to show you something today that is of interest to you, or at the very least, you got some enjoyment out of this review. I look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode, and until then, game on, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>